This train question is a little bit tricky because there's a few forces inside here. So a train is super heavy with a certain mass accelerating. At one instant, the speed of the train is 50, 5 meter per second and got resistive force. At this instant, what is the rate of increase of kinetic energy of the train? That's an interesting way of saying it. Rate of change of energy. Isn't that the same thing as power? Because power is energy change per unit time or you can say delta E delta T which is the more accurate one so we are really asking what is the power of the train overall power because you see there's resistive force maybe we should draw a picture okay let's draw a picture so imagine this is a train a box train super duper heavy with a certain mass and it is getting faster and faster because there's an acceleration of 0.8 at one moment on time, this train is moving at 5... Okay, maybe you should not draw arrows on it. Moving at 5 meter per second. That's the velocity. So why does it have all this velocity and acceleration? There's some force. There has to be a force pushing it. They only give us a resistive force though. This resistive force, uh, you can consider it as friction. So 15 kilo newton. So something has to be powering this train forward that is much stronger. Call this, I don't know, engine, force of engine. Okay, so engine is pulling this to the right. There is some friction, but overall the train is getting faster and faster and that's what we want to find. So power is energy over time, which can also be expressed as force times velocity. P equals to FV. But you see this F, which F do we use? There's two force, kilonewton, 15 kilonewton, and some unknown engine force pushing it forward. That's where we gotta, we gotta use the Newton's second law to help us a little bit here. So we need to say, okay, this has to be the net force of everything, okay? Net force, why net force? Because you see, there's two forces here. Engine will push, friction will resist, but overall, we can say, all right, all these forces here and there add up together, it's a net force. So how do you find the net force? Net force of a train here, net force, you can use Newton's second law, equals to m times a. So we don't know the engine's force. It's okay. We got m, right? We got a, right? So we can calculate the net force. So this will be 3, 0, 0. 300000 zero, 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 times 0 0.8. That's our acceleration. And this will give us a value of 24. Wait. Let's write this out. 240 times 10 to the 3. Newton. Very big force. That is already considering the engine's force and the frictional force all added inside here. This, this value up here already. So then we can use P equals FV. So step one. Calculate that. Step two, now we can say, okay, pay equals to FV, but we're looking at the overall system. Okay, the effects of both the engine and frictional force. I'm just gonna make all this black. PFV. So here will be P is the rate of increase of kinetic energy already. So force here is 240 times 10 to the 3 times What's the velocity at that instant? 5 meter per second times 5. Okay, let's times 5. You should get 1.2 times 10 to the 6. Power is what? Unit of watt. Watt. So 1.2 megawatt is the best answer you can choose for this question. Okay, the trick here I think is to, to use the net force. Not... Uh, in your P equals FV equation, uh, this one, this one, okay. Not the frictional force, not frictional, or the engine force, which we don't know. I mean, you could find it, but why? So don't use, don't use this one. Okay, that's the main tip for you to look at. It's a bit crowded up there, but oh well. So that's all for this question. I will see you in the next one.